The following snack food video devotional may be considered offensive to some. And if this is indeed the case, I do apologize in advance. Please understand that these snack food video devotionals are never created to be offensive to anyone, but to enhance your walk with Christ. So please consider this notion if you are offended. If you're swimming in a big, beautiful community pool on a wonderful warm summer day, and there's a lifeguard present, he or she may look off in a distance and see lightning strikes coming in this direction quite quickly, which of course could pose disastrous results. So his or her job is to get you out of the pool. But if you don't see any lightning, sometimes they may have to scream, offend you, and possibly shock you from your comfort zone so that the impending lightning strikes don't shock you from this life. Welcome to Snack Food for the Soul. Our subject matter this week is discussing the power of words, the power of the tongue. Now, we all are well familiar with how powerful words can be in your life. You can start off your day literally speaking condemnation to your entire existence by uttering a few short words. When you first wake up in the morning, what are the first thoughts that go through your mind? And what are the first words that come out of your mouth? Before you go to bed at night, what are the last thoughts on your mind? And what are the last words that come out of your mouth? Do you realize that when you go to bed, the last thing you think and the last things you speak may be the last things remembered or chronicled in this life if the Lord decides to call you home in your sleep? You realize when you first get out of bed, the thoughts that drive you out of your bed and the words that you first speak upon your feet on the floor of your bedroom or wherever it is you're sleeping. Some of us sleep at work. Those may be the last thoughts or words that chronicle your existence in this life should the Lord decide to call you home immediately. Your words are so amazingly powerful and we understand that, well, well my methodology is this. Your words are part of the, your three calling cards. And when I say your calling cards, I mean literally your calling in life. And that are your, those are your thoughts, those are your words, and your actions. And we know the adage. We hear, say it over and over again. Watch your words for they become, yes, we've been there. But you can conceal your thoughts. You can conceal your words. Some of us may be able to even conceal our actions. But you cannot live a life that is completely a lie by hiding all three. What is done in the dark, my friend, will eventually come to light because you do not rule the destiny of this world and every action causes a reaction. And whatever you do for the sake of being deceitful, it will come to pass eventually. So this snack food is for you if you really don't understand the dynamic that goes into the most powerful member in your body and that is your tongue so we understand that the bible says and i've got some notes here to keep me on point so we stay within our time i'm looking at here uh, uh book of proverbs 18:21 says death and life and the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof many of us are very quick to quote that scripture the a clause but the b clause you will eat the fruit thereof that basically means what you speak out of your mouth will eventually dictate your destiny and it will come back to you and you will eat the fruit, whether it be sweet or if it's bitter. So be very cautious in thinking now, where do these words come from? They come from your thoughts and what you meditate on. So as a man thinketh, so is he, the Bible says. And your words literally can destroy someone's life. Your words can build up someone. How many times do the uh, cancer patients and doctors dealing with medicine, especially people who are terminally ill, they say, go around your loved ones, smile, enjoy your life, be comfortable. And some people, they slip into the eternity with doing those precise things. It was simply their time. And some people practice thinking good things, speaking good things, and yes, doing good things. And what happens for some reason or another, it could be spiritual, it could be chemical, because some things are purely science, understand that. If I bounce a ball, that's got nothing to do with God, that's gravity. 
<laughs> if you stand on a tall building during an electrical storm and hold up a metal pole and you get struck by lightning, uh, that's not because you're being condemned by God. That's science. But there are certain things we can do to change how science dictates things should go. And by changing the way you think and changing the way you speak and changing the things you do, it literally chemically changes the balance in your body. You can go from highly toxic uh, blood environment to a highly alkaline blood environment, and of which makes it very difficult for diseases to exist. So let's talk about the tongue a little bit. What do you think on and what do you meditate? The Bible says, my sheep know the master's voice. Jesus already has voice printed into our DNA what he sounds like. And not just audibly, but what he feels like. We know what we're doing, what we're doing when it's right, and we know what we're doing when it's wrong. When you know the voice of God, some people say, how will I know the voice of God for myself? Well, let's put it this way. The enemy won't tell you to do something good. He won't ever tell you to sacrifice for the sake of someone else. And he will never tell you to deny your flesh for the sake of good. You can better believe that. The enemy will not tell you to hang up the phone and stop backbiting and gossiping and spreading lies. The enemy will not tell you, oh, well, you know that your loved one, your wife, your husband, they left you lonely and left you put upon and, and left you destitute out there. So uh, don't go cheap. Go home and pray and, and, and try and make amends. The enemy will never tell you to do that. So when you know that you know the voice of God, don't deny it. The voice of God is a still, quiet voice, and it oftentimes will not appeal to your flesh. It won't tell you what your flesh wants, because we know the word says we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Iniquity is immor immorality. We are shaped in immorality. Our flesh constantly desires to do things that are antagonistic to the spirit of the living God. So let's get back to the words. What you think will determine those words. How long does it take you from the time you get up to go negative? How long does it take you from the time you get up to go positive? When you begin your day, and this is a test for you, when you, the Lord blesses you tomorrow to wake up, from the moment your alarm clock, smartphone, whatever device that charges your eyes to open up in the land of the living, how long does it take you to start thinking something negative? saying something negative or doing something negative? How long does it take you to start, well, I can't believe that they said that, or look at him, look at her, or I can't stand my boss, I hate my boss, I hate these people I work with. How long does it take you to go negative? That will determine who you really are. Yeah, hey, you can tell me or tell someone else, or I can make you think I'm this positive brother who loves the Lord. And as soon as I shut this recording off, I go into backbiting and cussing and carrying on. Oh man, I hate doing this snack food. I wish this and I, oh man, and, 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 and. <laughs> that's who essentially I will be. And that's who essentially I am. Your words come from a place. And the things you say to people, how we build up our children's character, how we decimate their self-esteem. It is so quickly alterable by considering the things we're about to say. We have so many scriptures that talk about that and, and understanding in, in, in the beginning. Let's talk about God's perspective on words. Okay, let's, let's, let's start with that. Um, in the book of John, John 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So in the beginning was the word. The word must come from a mind. And the mind is a thinker. The thinker is a presence, an intelligence. And, and, and we think of the, 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 the word memra. Memra is a word. Memra is a thinker of a word. Memra is a gatherer of a word. Memra is an intellect. So in order to have a word, you must have an intellectual you must have a thought processes uh, in, in the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God, just simply. Who is God? The Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Does God have a name? Yes, his name is Yahweh. God is his designation, but his name is Yahweh. He is the I am that I am. When Moses went to speak with Pharaoh, and back then the authority you were given was determined by a name. Who sent you? 
And, and, and Moses says, who should I go and make these demands? Who should I say sent me? And, and God says, tell him that I am that I am. In the garden of Gethsemane, when the centurions came to Jesus and they were going to arrest him, and, and, and they said, we're looking for this man. This guy. And, and, and he goes, I am he. They fell back. Because it wasn't just simply making a statement. It wasn't a, 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 a pretext of the dynamics of a sentence. You have the nouns, the pronouns, the adjectives, and, and so forth. He made not a statement. He said his name. His name is what knocked them down. It wasn't the thunder in his voice. It wasn't the cadence in his words. It wasn't the authority of his presence. It was the mere mention of his name that caused their physical being to completely succumb to the very mention of the name of God. When he said, I am, they fell down. They were like, oh, wow, geez. They were so distracted by the fact that we finally got our man, they did not even realize that he didn't touch them. It wasn't a legion of angels that went and knocked them off their feet. It wasn't an earthquake. It was simply him saying who he was. I am, words, words. Those two words caused every knee to bow. <laughs> Their tongues didn't confess because they weren't familiar yet, but every knee gave in. And so when they got back up, he said it again, I am, boom, they fell back down. Dumb, ignorant, stupidity. But that is what we are today. We don't understand the efficacy of words and the value of words because we are made from the same intelligence, the same, the same uh, um, power. We are made in God's image, beloved. That is why when we enter a room, and you've heard me say this time and time again, when we enter a room, the enemy does not know the difference between you or God when you've been in his presence. Sure, if you came from a strip club, <laughs> you came from shooting up some cocaine and drugs and hanging out with the fellows or the girls, and you walk in a room, yeah, he will kick your butt. The seven sons of Sceva, they <laughs> try to cast out demons, but they're like, I know that name, I know that, I don't know, uh, and they got their butt whooped because they tried to use the authority of God without having a relationship with God. You got to be in relationship to understand the value. Again, the... Uh, a premise taught to me a very wise man, unless the value of something is determined, its abuse is inevitable. We don't understand the value of words, so we abuse the words that come out of us because we don't understand the substratum. We don't understand the very core from whence we've been, been, been created. We're created from the very core of God. His genetic code is within us. That's why we have the power to, 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 to walk on water, to, 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 to tread on demons, to, to heal the sick and raise the dead. We have that power, but we don't have enough relationship, beloved. That's why the words, the mind, you see social media, the foolishness that people type, it blows my mind. And I wonder, did you make it out of kindergarten? People asking for advice about ridiculous things to people who don't care about you. They do not. They don't even have a good reckoning of who they are. So the blind lead the blind, they both fall into a ditch. Understand, in the beginning, God. In the beginning was the word. So when God creates these words and these things for us to effectually use as tools, our words, back in the day, when you named a child, you named your child a name because it meant something. It did, it meant something. It meant Adam. Adam has a name, Jesus has a name, Moses has a name, Abraham has a name. These names were inscribed indelibly in the annals of heaven for all of eternity. There's a name for Adam. There's a meaning for it. And we name some of our children these names that I wonder, dear God, what were you smoking or drinking? because this is your child's destiny. This is what they're gonna be known by. And most people, I've asked some people, oh, that's a beautiful name, what does it mean? I don't know. Hello? <laughs> so think about the words that come out of your mouth and understand that God voice prints on you. And your words will literally dictate who you are. 
God voice prints on us, but so does the enemy. When you start speaking negativity and we say, oh, I was just joking. Oh, I didn't mean it. Well, you know, I, I just, I'm trying. You'll pray for me. And <laughs> you've been anesthetized. You've fallen asleep. You're virtually worthless in this life. Because God can't rely on you to speak life. The enemy can definitely count on you to speak stupidity. Because, you know, there's a cure for ignorance. It's called education. <laughs> right? There's a cure for low self-esteem. But there's no cure for stupidity. When you know better, but you choose just not to. God says he'd rather you be hot or cold. Be on fire like Peter was. Rebel without a cause. Right? God, Jesus built his church upon that personality that cussed and carried on and had more passion than purpose, right? Paul was cold, persecuted Christians, responsible for how many deaths before his Damascus Road experience. God warmed him up to purpose. But when you're on the fence and you're near the here, you're neither there, God says he will spew you out of his mouth. To someone who drinks a lot of beer, I suppose that would be tantamount to drinking warm beer. So start meditating before you speak. Think before you speak. Because once it's out, you can't bring it back. And people don't always tell you the truth about what they really think about you. Most of us are merely tolerated by the people around us. We think we're celebrated because of our good looks. We think we're, we think we're, 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 we're pushed up and, and propped up and, uh, on, the, on the top echelons of society because of our academia, intellectual prowess, who we know, our money, uh, our status. And most people, when you post what you post on social media, when you say what you say, they have an opinion of you. Just because they hit like, just because they hit dislike, or say whatever emoji they put out there, <laughs> it doesn't mean that's what they think about you in their heart. Beloved, when you speak and you act, ask the Lord, what do you say? Before I ask the advice or the feedback of other people, Lord, what do you say? Because better believe when that spirit of suicide comes over, that spirit of bigotry, that spirit of anxiety, bipolar, depression, anxiety, whatever it is, oh, you're going to want him then. So the words, words, words. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures that deal with the words. Ephesians 4.29, do not let any over wholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. In essence, silence is golden. If you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything. There's some people, silence is deafening to them, and they has got to keep talking and talking and talking and talking. You know the type. There are there there there, there are some uh, other scriptures. We got the heart of the righteous weighs its answers, but the mouth of the wicked gushes evil. Matthew fifteen eleven. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth that is what defiles them. Oh my gosh! We got uh, chapter four forty one and three. Set a guard over your mouth. Keep watch over the door of your lips. Beloved, idle chatter and idle hands are the devil's workshop. And you really have to be very cautious. We're closing out 2017 in a couple of weeks and social scientists and therapists say it takes about 45 days to create new habits. And, and, and most of us, we can't ever keep New Year's resolutions because we don't have the patience to endure that six weeks or so of consistent of consistency. We can't be consistent even to our own selves. We, we, we can't change our diet and lose weight because you know why? We don't really change our relationship to food. And in 2018, as we launch Freedom Perspective Ministries, we're gonna teach people that. And, I, and, and as we come to the close of, of my commitment for 2017 with these snack foods for the soul, I'm not exactly sure if the Lord will have me continue them. Um, I'm going to seek him on that because the commitment was to get people into a different modality of thinking because you cannot ever change your lifestyle and change to you change your mind style. You know, we, we, we want things that we've never had, but we're not willing to do what we've never done. And we got to put on our big boy pants and our, and our big girl dresses and, 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 and become adults, literally grow up. But we spent so much of our youth not doing what we knew we should have done because 
we're young. <laughs> now that we're grown up, you know, um, Paul says, when I was a, a, a child, I did childish things. But when I was a man, I put away childish things. And we, we, we need to put away childish behaviors and repetitious behaviors. And they say the sign of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, anticipating different results. We've got to change the way we think and the way we speak, beloved, in order to get different things. Because we are marked in the spiritual realm by the things that come out of our mouths. And you don't have to be a spiritual person to know this. There are people who are not spiritual at all, but they, they understand in the cosmos, they understand the universe, that what you put out comes back to you. It always does. So don't poison the air around you and then wonder why does your room stink? Huh? Be not necessarily insincere in flowery speech. The Bible speaks against that too. But be considerate and thoughtful in the words that come out of your mouth. What do you anticipate? If your food was determined by the seeds you planted and the seeds you planted were the words that come out of your mouth, would you starve to death because the things you ate were not healthy for you? So be thoughtful, be intelligent, and ask yourself, out of this fountain, is good water coming out or bitter water? Because a fountain does not spew dirty and clean water at the same time. You know the scripture. So therefore, ask yourself, if my destiny or my retirement Amen. Your eternal retirement, your destiny is what I'm going to feed off of. What am I seeding it with today? Am I seeding it with hateful words? Am I seeding it with sorrowful, resentful, bitter, angry words? Am I seeding it with stupidity and ignorance? Because if you don't know, it's okay. Just don't say anything. There's that old saying, it's better to be silent and to be thought a fool than to open up your mouth and remove all doubt. Mm, many of us are very uncomfortable with silence because we don't like what silence brings because we don't really know ourselves well enough. We're not well acquainted with this cavernous divide called our mind. So when we're quiet, all of a sudden we're in this dark room and it's billowing echoes. Hello, 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 hello. Because we don't fill it with anything intelligent. We don't fill it with scriptures. So here's what you can do to change your mind and to change your words. Meditate on some scriptures. Instead of Bruno Mars, and I love Bruno Mars, instead of Beyonce, instead of Ariana Grande, instead of, with me, it's some Coltrane, Wes Montgomery, and Norman Brown, some, some you know, George Benson, you know, I, I got to shut that stuff off, and I do, and I get into my word, because thy word have I hid in my heart, then I would not sin against thee. So if you keep meditating on the word, then you will have a better repertoire or library system from which to select your vernacular, your speech. Your speech patterns, your thought patterns come from a better place. But if all you've got in your library is a lot of junk food, then what's going to come out of your mouth is a lot of foolishness. So start reading some Psalms and Proverbs. They're really easy. Songs of Solomon. I call the Old Testament erotica. <laughs> Songs of Solomon. Solomon was a deep brother, man. And he loved him, the Shulamite bride. And, and, and you really want to, the Bible is so filled with stuff, but don't go by the foolish people who misinterpret it and twist it. Get to know the word for yourself. And, and yes, so the, the book of Psalms are songs, right? So back in that day, David, he was the Bruno Mars, the Michael Jackson. He, he was the James Taylor. He was the, 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 um, the, the, the Rascal Flats. He was all of this. He wrote beautiful music, beautiful love songs to the Lord. Rap music too, yes. It didn't sound like Beyonce. It didn't sound like Rascal Flatts. It didn't sound like Bruno Mars because the melodies were different back then. And back then when they wrote a song, when they wrote a love song to the Lord, it didn't matter who was the producer. There wasn't no um, uh, National uh, Recording Sciences of Arts. There was no um, NARIS, as they call it, the acronym. There, there, there wasn't uh, the Grammys. There wasn't none of that stuff. It was just me and him. It was a vertical relationship. And so when David wrote Psalms, he sang them to the Lord. So understand, when you read your Psalms by yourself, start singing it like a melody. And it's not going to sound great. Your voice, you may not be musically trained. It does not matter. 
because all the Lord cares about is what's coming out of the abundance of your heart. Is it sincere? You see, man can judge any tree by the fruit it bears. God is judging the tree by the root system. That's right. He is not so interested in how flourish and flowerful, flowerful are, are your branches. How productive are your branches? I mean, you can look over there. I'm looking at a rose bush right now. It looks great. But the health of that bush that I'm looking at right now, it emanates from the root system, the soil content. That's what God is concerned. Where are you planting yourself? Who are you sitting around? What are you hearing on a daily basis? Yes, who do you call friend? Who do you say you're in love with, right? What do you love when you do? What do you do? Do you really love what you do? God is concerned about what goes on on the inward only man is taken by your beauty, by your muscles, by your abs, by your hair, your skin, your nails, your, your teeth, your eyes, all that. Man is taken by that. God gave you that. That doesn't impress him. But it, what, he, what impresses him is what you choose to be on the inside, what you choose to meditate on, and what you the words out of this cavernous, endless um, um, word ensemble. Out of the entire world lexicon of words, he concerns himself with the words that you choose to speak. Yes. So again, any man can judge a tree by the fruit. God is looking at the root. What's in your root system? We talked about what's in your wallet, what's in your value system, right? Ah, what is in your root? What comes, what is the fruit that comes out of your mouth? What are the fruits of your lips? And I'm going to end it by reading this scripture for you to understand it even better. And I pray it does. And, 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 and look, we, we're at information age where if you don't know something, it's because you don't want to know it. Yeah, yeah, you can't talk about, well, I don't know the Bible that well. Oh, lies, filth, and trash. Google it, baby. <laughs> you can read what you want to read when you want to read it. And, and, and lots of people know stats of all kinds of players on the NBA and the NFL, but when it comes down to the scriptures, they're as ignorant as a baby is new. So please, I encourage you, and I got some, oh, some good stuff here that, that I, I just want you to, to, to delve in on and to consider. And, and I told you, I got to write notes to keep me on point because these things are a stream of consciousness. And if I don't have notes, brother will go off into another tangent, as you've probably seen uh, once or twice. I'm going to read Proverbs 26, 17 to 28. Humor me with this and I'll bless you. Proverbs 26, 17 to 28. Like one who grabs a stray dog by the ears is someone who rushes into a quarrel that's not their own. Like a maniac shooting flaming arrows of death is one who deceives their neighbor and says, I was only joking. Without a, without, w w without wood, a fire goes out. Without a gossip, a quarrel dies down. As charcoal to embers and as wood to a fire, so is a quarrelsome person for kindling strife. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to the innermost parts. Like a coating of silver dross on earthenware are fervent lips when with an evil heart. Enemies disguise themselves with their lips, but in their hearts they harbor deceit. Though their speech is charming, do not believe them, for seven abominations fill their hearts. Their malice may be concealed by deception, but their wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it. If someone rolls a stone, it will roll back onto them. I like that one. A lying tongue hates those it hurts, and a flattering mouth works ruin. Beloved, take heart. There's a change coming for all of us, and if you want to really be a different person in 2018, don't wait till 2018. Start today. It takes six weeks to formulate a habit. But like the thief on the cross with Jesus, Jesus says, this day you will be with me in paradise. There wasn't a six week window because we didn't have social media, nor did we have social scientists. If you wanted to get healed, you got healed. You wanted to change your behavior, you just changed your behavior. We have become such a namby-pamby society where we lean on everything. But the fact is, if we're fishers of men, and we are, we've got to know what bait to use, we've got to know where to go fish, we've got to know what time of day to fish, and we've got to know who we're fishing for. That means we must be wise. The Bible says, "You, he who wins souls is wise. So let's be wise. If you want to win souls in 2018, be better bait. 
And if you want to change your life in 2018, think this thing through. If you fail to plan, that's right, you plan to fail. So my prayer for you, and I'm passionate about this thing, because 2017 is coming to an end in about three, four weeks, man. It doesn't mean your life's coming to an end, but it's an opportunity for something new. So it does that mean wait till January 1? It means begin today. Start formulating your thoughts. Read those Psalms. Read the Proverbs. Read Songs of Solomon. Yeah, you talk about life coaches, all these life coaches out here. Everybody's a life coach today. My name is Dog. Got his uh, certification to be a life coach. He barks you to your better, higher development. <laughs> yeah, I don't really think a whole lot about that. You know why? Because they get it all out of the book of Ecclesiastes. They get it all out of the book of Leviticus. They get it all out of Proverbs and Psalms. It's all scripturally based. Jesus is the ultimate life coach because he made you baby. You're genetically predisposed to follow him. Don't go pay thousands of dollars for somebody to teach you how to do what's in your word for free. That's foolish if you ask me, but that's another story we can continue. Don't write the... Uh, editor of the newspaper letters please thank you very much god bless you i love you and there's nothing you can do about it my prayer for you is that god gives you the courage the passion the courage yet again even more courage i pray he gives you a passion to be more like him even more than a passion to look good before you walk out the door amen lord god protect my brother and my sister Mm, with a bloodline and a hedge of protection to do your very will let them speak well of you and make you popular you're already famous but lord god let us desire to use words that make you popular in jesus mighty name god bless you beloved and have an indescribably blessed week